see. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. All right. So hi everyone, this is going to be the latest version of the tutorial, Mass Effect 1 any percent. It should be up to date as of today, which is uh, March 10th, 2018. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. All right, so we're going to start off by going through character creation to show you how to set up your um, character. In general though, when, once you have done this one time, you should be saving um, right when you gain control on the ship, which you'll see me. You know, I'll, I'll try to set that up and show you how to do it. Um, but yeah, so you want to do custom male or female, doesn't really matter. Uh, there's no difference in male versus female, so we'll just call this tutorial. Warning, data corruption detected. Please reconstruct program. Alright, so Confirm what you want to do here is pick history. Earthborn. Confirm psychological Ruthless. Confirm military specialization. Plays Vanguard. And Confirm you want singularity as your identification. You know, uh, Profile reconstruction complete. Bonus talent. And here I'm gonna Confirm. turn auto save on. But in general, Auto saving actually wastes time, so if you want to like get really good times at some point, um, you want it uh, off. But yeah, all the rest of these settings are basically up to you. I would recommend having uh, auto love on set to squad only. Well, definitely not squad and player, for sure. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. So yeah, go through the opening cutscene here. Um, well, not much to say. Um, there's born, certain things I'm going to no say, which is this is going to be a route for the optimal way of doing any percent. I'll try to at my most of his unit at points in time him. recommend maybe some alternate ways you can do things, no and what the cost. I'll demonstrate um, is that the kind of some slightly different methods of doing things, but. Um, That's the only kind of person who can. I'm gonna try to, taxi. as best as I can, demonstrate this make the call. at you know the best level using all the fastest strat. Scene because you won't see it. Really is hot. Time when you're doing runs of this game. All stations secure for transit. Some other basic things I'm going to say right at the beginning is that um, you're going to see me right at the beginning skipping through dialogue very quickly. Um, this is by doing a um, out of game edit of the keybindings so that we have 
Uh, the tech escaping, which is normally bound to spacebar, bound to the mouse wheel. Um, this saves a lot of time, and it's just getting rid of, like, kind of a not interesting part of the run, so... Done it. So that's why I'm going through this so fast. Okay, so generally what you want to do is go here before you even do anything else and just hit save. This would be the save you're going to use for most of the run. Okay. Um, so I will definitely, in the description, um, put in an explanation of how to rebind um, your key bindings out of the game to have text skipping bound in mouse wheel. You generally uh, want text skipping bound in one direction and weapon swapping in the other direction. Um, you can do both in, on both, but it can mess with stuff, so it's generally best to have one in one direction, one in the other. Um, obviously, the, you, the optimal way to do this is have some kind of um, frictionless mouse wheel or like free scrolling mouse wheel, so that's gonna make it, definitely gonna make a difference. Um, and yeah, I would say it, in general you want whatever direction you're more comfortable scrolling really quickly and actually bound to weapon swapping, not to text skipping. Okay, so we'll go through this like we were doing an actual run. So, okay, so this is what you should see. So you time right as you, so you generally want to take out your weapon and hit your time, start time at the same time. So that's like what I would do here. So you'd start time like right when you did that. Okay. So the first strategy we're gonna use is something you're gonna see me do a lot in the run, which is use grenades. So normally when you're out of combat, you cannot sprint in this game, but if you use a grenade, you can put your, and blow, blow yourself up with it. You can put yourself in combat for a little bit, uh, long enough to, you know, use up your entire sprint bar, which saves about four seconds every time you do it. So you go like that. And here, it's not really something you have to do now, but this is when I like to do it just to remember, so I don't forget to do it after this cutscene. I'm gonna bind um, both throw and warp to some button. It doesn't really matter where on the bar you bind it, but you want it bound somewhere. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is you see these Three horizon these horizontal lines that are going through across the door, the longer ones, not the ones that are only like halfway across the floor. So not the smaller one, but the longer one. It goes all the way across. So you're gonna go to the third one. So this one here. I'm standing right in front of now, and you're gonna step forward and then step back. That'll get you into this conversation f faster without having to walk all the way up to talk to Nihilus. Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! We are under attack, taking heavy casualties! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! out after that no calm traffic at all just goes dead there's nothing reverse and hold of 38.5 okay. status report 17 minutes out captain no other alliance ships in the area take us in joker fast and quiet this mission just got a lot more complicated a small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. All right, so now we're heading on to Eden Prime. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. 
Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. All right. So now that we're in Eden Prime, we are approaching about a like point two. Few different things coming up in a relatively short succession here. So the first one is, there's these gas bag things floating around up here. You want to try to shoot at one and actually hit it. So, just shooting at one is not good enough. To actually hit it, that'll put you in combat. So you need to see it blow up. That'll get you, you know, a little bit of sprint and allow you to run over here. To this cutscene where Jenkins dies. So, what you want to do when you get out of this cutscene is there's going to be three uh, Geth drone and you want to use warp on the middle one and if you aim at the middle one and do it correctly you should actually have the warp effect all three of these drones which will be enough to kill all of them so aim at the middle one all get hit and as soon as you hear the level up sound you want to go into your menu level up which is I think by default the U key so you want to level up pistols to three to unlock marksman warp just dump some points in that to do some extra dent there get some extra duration on it and you sing it grab singularity most important things here are marksman and singularity you're gonna need to dump these points and work at some point so you might as well do it now um, so now you just bind these two abilities next okay now your goal is gonna be to turn on marksman just try to get these drones up here to come around the corner to shoot at you faster than if you had just gone all the way up there. And you're going to need to kill them completely. Okay, then you're going to run over to this corner by these rocks. Um, you're going to crouch and quick save. And this is for a glitch that we're going to do, which is that when you quick save and crouch in specific areas and then try to reload your save, the game will load you in a slightly different position because it doesn't want to load you crouched. And for some reason, if you do that in certain places, it pushes you out of bounds. One thing I will note, um, about this section is that there's a pretty good um, audio cue to know when you're out of combat long enough to save, which is right when he says, when he says um, a lot of bodies. So right when he says basically a, and then goes into a lot of bodies, is when, it's, when you should be out of combat and be able to save. So now we just reload our quick save, and then we're going to be. Um, out of bounds and I did something wrong so we're not out of bounds so do that again okay now we're out of bounds all right so to help demonstrate what I'm gonna do okay it is capturing my cursor all right trying to make sure it is okay so anyways I'm gonna try to demonstrate this so basically what you have is you have this this um, rock wall thing you're gonna be trying to get up onto this mountain here essentially so there's a lot of invisible walls as you can see if I try to walk up to this thing you know I just won't do anything so what you're trying to look for is this little part where it kind of forms this corner here so right here where I'm shooting that is what there's a seam here that you are able to walk up. But if you walk straight up again, you're going to hit like that and fall down. So you basically need to kind of do this enough times to learn where the top of what you can hit is, which is kind of a little bit before this part where it flattens out above you. So when you're standing about where I am, so your left foot should be on this like gray part, or sorry, the green part in between the two gray parts. That's a good sign of the end of graph. You're going to want to turn to the left a bit and kind of line up your gun with this part here. And then you just want to walk straight forward. And also, you want, so you want to hold straight and to the right. So W and D if you have it bounded W A S D. You want to hold W first a bit and then start holding W and D at the same time. And once you get kind of stuck and don't seem to be moving up anymore, you want to start holding D. So I'll try to show that again. Um, it usually takes a bit longer to clip up, so don't feel bad if it didn't go as fast as it just did there for me. So just walk forward a bit. This is more typical of what you might see. Sometimes you want to, might want to turn, 
uh, back up a little bit. So hold D and S, so right and backwards, and that might help as well to help you get up. But you, but what happens is you're really trying to avoid going too far to the left here because you'll just slide down this uh, hill and fall out of bounds into a void, and you can't really get back up from there. Okay. So again, walking up, forward. Okay, see, that's what happens if you do it wrong. So again, go through this, past the tree, up here. Oh man, this is, this is bad. I'm being bad for someone who's trying to explain how to do a trick. So yeah, this one is definitely um, a lot of trial and error to figure out something that works for you. Um, I tried to best explain like how is this diagrammed. Okay, and then now that we're up here, we're going to try to get in combat because we don't want to be walking the whole way. Because uh, we have a pretty long stretch to walk out of bounds. So over to the side of us on the right, when we're climbing along this rock wall. There's actually going to be some drones down below us that we can't see. And if we shoot at them enough, or shoot over at them enough, we'll pull them into combat with us and they'll start shooting back at us. And that will keep us in combat the whole rest of the way. So we really need to shoot like somewhere over here. Now we're in combat. Um, if they're not shooting at you, you may need to make sure you shoot at them some more because you'll probably leave combat um, after a decent amount of, or like after not too long if they haven't started shooting back at you once you get into combat. So we want to go straight up here. So this tower, off in the distance, that's kind of what you want to line yourself up with. Um, and then you want to turn to the right a bit when you see this little ditch here and just hug the left edge of it. Keep sprinting forward and you'll eventually reach um, this section here. We want to drop down. We basically want to come down on the right side of this tree over here. Okay. All clear. So there's a crate here called a malfunctioning object. You want to loot that because we're trying to get some good weapons. Uh, generally what you're looking for are pistols. Um, you generally don't want to worry about equipping it here, so generally what you want to do is just uh, mash E. So hit E to bring up the menu and hit E to just hit take all. Um, sometimes you may need to hit it more than once. Then you want to shoot kind of maybe at the same time as you're doing that or, you know, as you're, even as you're coming down the hill, you want to shoot over kind of in between these two explosive canisters that are called containment cells. And you should go in combat and you should hear this noise that you're hearing right now, which is the husks coming down. If you did that, that means you did it right. And you want to just run up here, uh, past Nihilus' corpse, and you'll get this bugged out cutscene where it'll teleport you back and um, give you some experience, kill the guys behind you. So now we just need to keep going forward. Um, but the fact that we skipped Ashley and skipped uh, the Nihilus cutscene does mean we have to do one thing to the healing. If you are familiar with this part, there's normally a lot more guys on here. And we, need to, we still need those guys to spawn, otherwise we won't be able to use the tram, because they need to all be dead. So we run forward as far as we can after killing that one guy, quick save, and then reload our save. And that'll actually spawn them all for some reason. Okay, so this fight is tricky. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Why I'm floating, or why they're floating, or whatever. It's really weird. But whatever. Uh, once you kill those guys, you don't have to kill the guys behind you. So, they're behind you, but when you reload your save, you'll be facing in the opposite direction of where you were facing when you uh, saved the game. So you always want to turn around and kill all the guys column. in front of you Leave from there. No after you reload the save. Um, the guys behind you are not relevant to... Uh, triggering the ability to use the Now we need to uh, disarm all these charges. Disarm the first one, shoot to get yourself in combat, then run up the stairs. 
So now you got these guys over on the right of you, off the tram, you want to send Caden over there, you're using some squad commands so he can help you kill some of these guys while you're trying to disarm the bombs. And hopefully he'll at least kill that one before you do it. And now you want to send him all the way forward up there. And generally you need to kill this one trooper by yourself. And then disarm the next bomb. Now keep running forward. Um, tell him to go over here if you need to. Kill this last trooper. Uh, use Singularity to get those other guys on the side as well as you're running in here. And then you want to make sure all these guys are dead and loot this other crate. Um, then sprint forward. Use throw on this guy here. And then activate um, marksman, kill the last trooper, and then go activate the beacon. Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. So yeah, now you have a pretty lengthy cutscene to go through as you finish the mission. She looks pretty silly um, if you're playing as a male shepherd. It doesn't look quite as silly as if you're playing as female. Uh, just because uh, Keaton and Ashley basically switch what roles they play in this cutscene depending on if you're male or female. And, uh, you know, the role Ashley plays when you're male is funnier than it is when it's female. So, like, the fact that she's missing is funnier for the role she plays. But yeah, like I said again, there's essentially no meaningful differences in terms we of time for male versus female, so pick whatever you'd prefer to play as and use that. Alliance vessel. It was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. So next we're going to be heading to the Citadel. This human must be eliminated. So one thing I have not mentioned before, but um, it's definitely important to mention as we're talk going through the early part of the game, is there's two things you really are concerned about quite a bit Doctor, um, if Dr. you want to be Tucker, as optimal as possible, which is maximizing both the number of credits you get and the number of experience, or the amount of experience you get. So. You um, you're not going to go out of your way to kill too many enemies in some of these areas, but certainly when you're like in the Mako, later, that's going to be one of your goals. And we're going to try to loot enough random stuff to help us get some extra credits as well. Um, take some paths that put us in... Um, put us, or run us past more enemies so that we can hopefully get some more extra experience and... We extra should credits from killing enemies and Head up to the bridge and enemy tell weapon to drops and stuff, dock. or like item drops and stuff that we can sell. So, one thing that's just an easy way to get some extra experience is when you're on the ship, uh, both here and then one time a bit later, which I'll point out to you when we get to it, there's these uh, codex things you can read to get a little bit of extra experience. It doesn't really make a huge difference, but there's one right there, the nav manual. So just hit E while you're walking past. And you should get the codex entry and get some free experience. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work.
So, you know, Eden Prime, for the most part, was, you know, a relatively, um... No, we had one out of bounds, which skipped a decent amount of the planet, but other than that, we were going, you know, in a relatively straightforward path through the mission. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted, you may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower, Normandy now. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower, please proceed to Dock 422. Once you get through this cutscene here, we're going to head down the stairs to the left. Um, go through this door on the left as well. Continue walking down the stairs, and we're going to use our next grenade to get into combat here. To um, extra sprint off, get over to this travel station. We're going to go up to the Citadel Tower. So here we want to talk to Garrus. So we can um, advance the plot enough so that when we transit up here again, we won't be brought, be brought down here. We'll be brought actually up to where the council is. We're going to run into this corner, crouch, and quick save again. So we're going to be going out of bounds again. So this one is kind of tricky. Um, actually going to make a save here in case this doesn't work. But um, this, this one can be the one that you kind of get messed up with the most. As you can see, there's this kind of puddle of water here um, to the right, in addition to this little, uh, I don't even know what you want to call it, part you could like stand on that's not water. So when we um, do this save, we're trying to land on top of this if we want to be able to get to where we want to get to, to get out of bounds, but sometimes when you load in your teammate to like push you out of the way or something and you end up down here. If you end up down here there's really no way you can salvage this. Um, but if you do this fast enough it generally isn't a problem um, but sometimes it happens. So again load here. So one thing I also want to mention too is generally a good habit to get into when you're reloading uh, quick saves is just to hold W as soon as you see the mass relay kind of loading screen hold up. So you can uh, you know, that's when it first starts detecting your inputs, and um, we'll carry them through as it loads the save. So you'll already be moving forward, which is what you want to be doing here. Um, once we get in, and if we're in the right position, we want to move to the right. Um, and we should move to the right such that it looks like Shepard is kind of clipping um, through this... So this thing that hangs down here, he should be kind of clipping through it. His head should be kind of clipping through it there. Um, and once we've done that, we can quick save again and reload again. And then we should be somewhere where we can actually make use of this out of bounds. So hold W. Again, we want to uh, take out our gun and go into cover. And as you saw, it's, ve it's very quick there. Um, so, you know, it's like maybe a second before you, once you load in and can see something before you quick save and should be loading again. Okay, and now we can hold W again. And we're gonna be up against this edge here on the water. And it, you can see the elevator shaft here. So all the times once you're out of bounds, what you need to do to be able to go anywhere is you need to be able to crouch, which is usually, I think, bound to control by default, which will actually allow you to fall down. Places like this, and then you're gonna to want to turn around to the south. Um, getting used to the mini map is also really important. So the big, uh, you know, pointer at the top of the mini map, in the way I'm facing right now, I'll call that the south and the north. And the one way there's the little, um, you know, line there, just in the opposite direction is south. Um, also, one thing to note is if when you do this fast enough, you should be in combat here for a bit. Once you fall down, I, you know, spent time standing here and talking. So it's not gonna be like that, but you're gonna want. So you want to turn to south, sprint, and then continue going. So I can show that off. 
So yes, I am in combat here. And then you're going to want to run off this way. And then just head straight south. Um, generally, you should be a bit closer to this thing. Um, but yeah, it's not super important. If you feel like you're a bit too far over the left, you can just turn more to the right as you're heading south. So ahead more, you know, this way. But when, it, when you see a little X show up on the minimap, which won't be for a while, or like exclamation part won't show up on the minimap, that's when you're in the right place. Okay, so knowing what to do next. There's these three light fixtures along the wall. One here, one here, one here. Again, we're going to try to get to this one. And again, once we got in here and it loaded in, we would have been in combat. So we would have been able to sprint over to it. But we're going to go over to this third light fixture from the right. And just go straight as far as we can past it. And we're going to eventually hit a wall where we can't move anymore, which is right here. And then you want to crouch again, and then keep moving. So generally, crouch and hit W at the same time, and it'll work. You should load in. And now we're in Cory's den, but we're in the ceiling. So we want to run over here. Be, care be very careful, because you can fall off the edge here. So generally, what I do is like to move all the way up forward on this uh, wall here, and then move forward along this wall here. OK. And now this is going to be the fight that looks the most sketchy. Because it will look like you're standing on nothing, but I promise you there is a collision here. If you want to walk straight forward, you can see this like red um, higher part of the ceiling. Next to us, that's where we want to be, in between that and that. There's, as you'll see when I go here, there's another side to it. This is where we want to be. Um, and then we just want to crouch and then quick save again. This will get us back in bounce next to Fist. As you can see. Okay, then you want to sprint over here, use Marksman, use um, Singularity, shoot him up, and he'll die. Wait! Don't kill me, I surrender! Okay. Don't worry, you'll never see me again. So now we're going to do our next level up. Um, of sp you know, ne well, we're going to level up and spend our set of points. So here we want to put three points in Assault Training to grab Adrenaline Burst. We want to put one point in Warp to unlock barrier. We want to put one point in barrier to unlock barrier, and then we just want to dump our last point in throw because that's the next thing that we're going to want to dump a lot of points into. Similar to what we did with warp on the first time we leveled up. Just um, it's just a good way to not forget that you need a, to put this point in throw. Okay. The next thing you want to do is open up your inventory and see if you have a pistol here. Um, if you are going you know, as quickly as possible through the crates. Just hitting E, you won't necessarily know unless you, you know, are really quick to notice whether or not it was. But you want to equip it here if you have one. Anything other than a Kessler one is good. Kessler one is what you'll default have, so if you have anything other than that, you should equip it. Otherwise, don't worry too much. Just go out of your menu. Next, you want to bind um, both barrier and adrenaline burst somewhere on your bar. Now I'm going to save here because this part is one of the sketchiest parts in the run, uh, as far as being a dying. So what happens normally in this mission is you're supposed to fight through some guys to go in here, um, and then on the way out you're supposed to fight through some more guys. Um, but it turns out us skipping into this area early just made it so both those sets of guys are completely spawned in at once. Um, so there's a whole crap load of guys here, and you can get really uh, easily killed by all of them. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to go up to this door, use barrier to give us some extra health, sprint as quickly as we can through this area, get adrenaline burst, use barrier again, and also maybe use metagel if you need to to stay alive. But if everything works out, you should still be alive. Okay, then we're going to go up here. These two assassins are going to come in combat right when you get to this thing. So you want to use Marksman and to hit one of them, and then um, use Singularity to lift the other one up and kill him. All targets down. And run over to this door, and now we're going to talk to Tally. So our goal when we're walking into this Tally cutscene is that our gun um, crosshair is kind of aimed at her head. Um, like this. And then walk in. And you want to basically use throw as soon as you get out of this cutscene to knock all these guys down. 
the deal's off. And ideally, it'll kill all of them with just the throw. So you want to just, you know, um, mash it while you're going through this cutscene so you click it as fast as possible after you exit the cutscene. And a lot of times, this is the guy who will be sur survived, so look out for him. He's probably the one you'll need to kill. Just anyone. I was on my pilgrimage. My right of passage so now we're back up here with Most Tally, showing off the evidence to Udina and Anderson. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. That's Saren's voice. This proves he was involved in the attack. Okay. Thanks. You won't regret this. So now, we have to head back up to the Citadel Council. Um, if you're familiar with this game, which hopefully most of you are, you will remember that when you do this casually, you have to go talk to the Council twice. First you tell them about the beacon and whatever, about what the dockworks here said about Saren, and they won't believe you, and so you have to go get more evidence. And that's where you end up getting the tally to help you out, essentially, after a while. We haven't done either of those con we haven't done that first conversation yet, and we're already heading up here for the second conversation. So what's going to happen is when we talk to Anderson, it's going to try to play both these cutscenes at once, and that's not really going to work. So it'll start playing it sort of at first, and then it'll um, um, it'll break after a bit. So I'll show you what you have to do. But basically, what you're going to have to do is wait until you get a specific spot in the cutscene starting to play and then quick save and reload your save. And for some reason that will just fix itself. Skip the first half of the cutscene. I like the first version of the cutscene um, before you get tally and it'll just go directly to uh, the tally version of the cutscene the next time you talk to Anderson. That's what we're going to do here. Come on. Udina's presenting the Quarian's evidence to the council. So basically what you'll see is you'll see the whole screen kind of like flash like that where you could see your um, Minimap and your all the menus appear on the screen briefly and then disappear again. That's when you want a quick save, and then you can reload that save from here. Um, if you just you know left it there, it would have soft locked and not done anything. Then you want to head back down and talk to Anderson again, and now it'll properly proceed with this part of the with the part of the um, cutscene you're supposed to be on after getting tally. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. You want it? Also, hello, it's on card. Commander Shepard, step forward. Decision of the council that you be granted all the powers so yeah, and still there. Cuts into watch. Spectres are not trained, but chosen. Individuals forged in the fire of service and battle. Those whose actions elevate them above the rank and file. Spectres are an ideal, a symbol, the embodiment of courage, determination, and self reliance. They are the right hand of the council, instruments of our will. Spectres bear a great burden. They are protectors of galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense. The safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. Anderson, come with me. Okay, so when you're exiting out of the cutscene, you're going to get a menu popping up that tells you you have your Spectre talents unlocked. So you just, as you're also scrolling through quickly, hit. E to do that really fast. And then, again, the grenades to blow yourself up. Go over to the transit terminal, and then go down to the embassies. Okay. And then we're going to continue heading down, so, you know, now we're supposed to basically go to the Normandy, but we have a long way to get there normally, so we're going to try to get there a bit faster. 
again, another grenade here, because we have a lot of walking to do. They're going to go into this corner by the water here, and then quick save and load. Okay, so this one's really important that you start holding D as soon as you see the um, mass relay part of the loading screen show up, but not any sooner or later than that, basically. If you want to land on the right part, so right now. And see, I didn't even do it early enough, so. If you don't do it early enough, you won't land on top of this white thing here. And I'm still not doing it early enough. I'm not sure what I did wrong. I'll just reload a save. Sure. So yeah, not only is it important to be um, holding D, but you the positioning here um, when you go into this corner is also important. And that's probably what I did wrong like slightly more to the right or left and it didn't work okay so what's important here is you want to land on top of this thing okay what am i doing wrong dude this, is, this doesn't make any sense i'm so confused This time I landed on it. Okay, so you want to run really quickly off, such that, um, how do I explain this? So there's a cone around you, which way you're facing when you're on the minimap. The left part of that should be lined up just along the same line that the, goes straight through the minimap. So, you know, straight through the minimap, there's basically a line from east to west, or west to east, and you want the cone that surrounds which way you're facing on the minimap, the left part of left edge of that to be lined up exactly along the line um, that has uh, that goes through the minimap. And you want to do this really quickly so you're running, you're sprinting off still when you run off the edge. And then your next goal is that there's this yellow marker on the map, like for where an elevator is. You want to pay attention to where that is. I should go kind of right down to the bottom of the mini map from which way you're running. So, like this. And you'll see right as it touches, like the other part, the west part, you want to turn a bit so it kind of goes straight off. And then you want to head directly to the east and a bit uh, more north. And you should land in the right place. So, I did not land in the right place because I was trying to explain it at the same time. But it's something you definitely just need to practice a bunch of times. Um, so again. Wait until the yellow part goes to the bottom. Turn around a bit. And go like kind of this direction. So just pay attention to the minimap. That's going to be the easiest way to, fit, to do this if you're not sure what you're doing. And then you're going to walk over to the stairs here. And then... Hit control the crouch and clip down. And sometimes you might need to adjust your position on the stairs a bit to actually fall. So just keep that in mind. And yeah. Here, just um, head to Novaria.
Approach control, this is the SSV Normandy, requesting a vector and a bird. Normandy, your arrival was not scheduled. Our defense grid is armed and tracking you. State your business. Citadel business. We got a Council Spectre aboard. Landing access granted. Normandy. Be advised, we will be confirming identification on arrival. If confirmation cannot be established, your vessel will be impounded. What a fun bunch. Okay, let's now just exit the ship. You want to bring Caden and Tally with you pretty much everywhere for a while now. Just as a interior recommendation, with exterior you want to atmosphere. walk up to the right edge of this. Logged. The commanding officer and is assured. going. Exo okay, and then right when we get death. here, we're gonna turn to the right and we're gonna shoot at this crate all the way down, and that'll for some reason put us in combat. Okay, and then just head into this cutscene here. Um. Okay. So I didn't even do it there, but there is a faster way to do this whole section. So. It's going to be more apparent once I do this next thing, so real quick. So one thing we didn't talk about yet, because it hasn't been relevant yet, is that when you're swapping weapons like this, like really quickly, so using mouse wheel is really important for this, it'll s delay certain dialogues from starting. So any dialogue that happens when you walk across a certain point on the map um, will be prevented from starting for a little bit until you stop swapping weapons. So what we're going to try to do is avoid the cutscene with Gianna here, but okay, when, once we continue, if we, you know, if we continue swapping weapons, we're eventually going to have to stop and it's going to eventually pull us back. So what we want to do is, while we're swapping weapons, get as far forward as we can, and quick save and reload the save, and that'll prevent us from ever having to watch the cutscene. So what you can do, to be a bit more optimal, is to skip this cutscene as well, and this one, and all. But you have to walk a really long distance with doing this, and it's very easy to uh, slow down just a little too much, and it'll pull you all the way back to her. And skipping her cutscene only saves, uh, at the docks, only saves maybe an extra second, and it's a lot larger risk. So, I would definitely recommend just only skipping this one. So anyways, we weapon swap here. And, I am Gianna. Okay. Yeah. See, I've been doing it for too long, if trying to show it off. You can ask me at the administrator's office. <laughs> okay. But essentially, what you would do. Um. Let me reload this. All right. Just to demonstrate how it actually that it does actually work. Okay. So we start swapping weapons. Up to the elevator, quick save, quickly bring up our menu, and then load the save. So it's very important to be quick in the bringing up the menu after hitting the quick Hatch. save button the um, and then loading the save. Otherwise, you still get pulled back. And, For your own safety, and then you go up the elevator. The of you are required to obey any directions given by our security personnel. If you have questions or concerns, our friendly administrative staff is always available. Thank you, and enjoy your stay. Okay. So anyways. Head down these two sets of stairs and then turn right. Um, again, grenade to get in combat. So most likely at this point you'll either have zero or one grenade left, depending on if you've got a random grenade drop while you're on Eden Prime. Most of the time I have zero though. Um, but that's not really a big problem. And we're just going to head up these stairs and head toward the garage. And can you guess what we're gonna do next? We're gonna clip into the garage. Just like, you know, what we've been doing so far. And then hold W here while you're, you know, loading in. And we get into this cutscene with the Geth in the garage. So we need to kill all of these Geth before we can leave. So what I'm gonna try to do is Bring out my pistol, I'll use Marksman to blow up these two explosive canisters on the right, which will hopefully, or I guess three explosive canisters, which will hopefully blow up the one jumping geth. I'm gonna knock this um, guy down, 
this, that, the other jumping one is, tends to be the hardest one to actually kill. But, okay. So now becomes the point where we have to start worrying about killing lots of stuff for extra experience and money. So that's what we're going to be trying to do while we're in the makeup. So the things that give us the most experience in this makeup section uh, that don't, you know, waste a lot of time going out of our way to try to kill, like the armature does, is, uh, or sorry, are the turrets. So we're going to mostly try to focus on killing turrets, because those give us a lot more experience than just the random guest soldiers do. Um, or, you know, and don't waste as much time as the armature does. We can hit them from pretty far away. It's also a good benefit to them. So generally rockets are the best way to deal damage when you're in the Mako. The machine gun doesn't really do a lot of damage. Um, so I'll only use it in between um, waiting for rocket recharge, essentially. The first turret is right here, so uh, another important thing to note is that when you're in the air, your aim will get deflected quite a bit. Okay, you don't usually want to slow down there, I was just doing it to make sure I actually got this. Then here, um, if you're good at driving the Mako, so generally just get up against this ledge and hold W, and then turn your aim around and try to kill a bunch of these guys as well. Um, Yeah, getting used to driving the Mako is going to be really important for this run, and I don't really have any recommendations on how to get better at that other than to do it a lot. But you'll see, you, 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 you can only sort of like kind of control the Mako, but you can never like actually make it a good vehicle to drive, even if you know what you're doing. So now we're just going to keep heading forward. So there's an armature behind us, like I said, that takes too much time to kill, so we're just going to ignore it. We want to keep... We want to keep moving forward as much as we can with the Mako while killing stuff. Um, rather than slowing down to kill stuff. So... You know, all the experience we should be getting here we should not be slowing down how quickly we get through this area too much. Uh, we still don't want to be in the Mako for, you know, any longer than we have to be. Okay, so yeah, killing those. So this this one is one where I like to just zoom in and kill it. It's the easiest way to actually hit it from really far away. It's kind of hiding behind a, a hill here, and it might. It's hard to usually hit it until you get pretty close. Uh, but you can feel free to zoom like that anywhere. I'm just not very good at driving. And I have my um, aim zoomed in with the mango, so I try to avoid doing it as much as possible. Um, but that's the one place where I definitely always use it. Because you can just hold W and go straight forward and hit them a couple times, and you won't have to worry about running into any walls or running yourself off a cliff or anything. So, there's another turret here, and another one over here. This one over here you can hit from across the gap if you want to, you know, sometimes worth it, but it's usually not too hard to hit here, and you may be more likely to accidentally run yourself off the side if you like turned like this and trying to shoot it at the same time from that side. So we're almost done with the Mako here. Okay. So... I'll kill this last turret just to be thorough. You generally want to try to kill him. But if this, if, if you're going to miss any one of them, this is the one to miss. Um, okay, so now I'm going to have this weird thing happen. This only happens if you have a modern AMD processor. Um, but... Modern Intel processes won't have this at all. Um, you'll get this weird texture thing because of weird lighting stuff not working properly, um, where everything will be black. It doesn't not like everything will be black, but lots of textures will be black. Um, but I'm going to still try to explain what you should do here as best as I can. It might be hard to visualize what's going on, but so there's a Geth repair drone there. You want to kill that first, then kill the Geth Juggernaut and kill these two Krogan. Uh, generally I like to shoot that one, throw that one to the ground. I think I missed that time. 
okay, and then head up here and use Singularity directly on this Krogan, and it'll pull these boxes towards them, which will hurt him, and we should end up killing him once your teammates run by. And you want to grab this um, crate here, which always has a grenade in it and generally has some sort of um, ammo rounds that could be useful to support with your gun. And then go up the elevator. So when we get to the top of this elevator, it's going to be really important that we don't actually kill all the enemies in this room because we'll get an extra cutscene. So we're going to try to just run past them as much as possible. Um, you can shoot as soon as you get out of here to get in combat, um, which is generally a good idea. And then we should go up this way. Don't shoot at anything yourself, other than maybe this one guy here. And then let your teammates, you know, your teammates will probably kill a couple of these guys, but it's, it's unlikely that they would kill all of them. Unless you get really bad luck. Then head up another elevator. Okay, and up here we got another group of um, enemies to kill. These are like little Rachni guys. Um, you want to kill all of them first before we do anything else here. Let's think about 10 of them. So sometimes you have to go around the corner here to actually get them to see because they get stuck in the walls. I'm going to open this technician kit just to get some uh, extra things we can sell later. And then we're going to go in between these two. I don't know even what these things are supposed to be. But right in between the two of them. And then go up against the wall. And then crouch. And quick save. Okay, so this, this is a um, hard one to explain exactly what I do for. But so... When you're on Novaria, the out of bounds you're going to do is always going to put you like at the top of the skybox. So you want to turn around right away and head towards this X. Um, that'll tell you that the X is just a good way to know that you're going in the correct direction. But you want to just head generally so that it goes um, right through the bottom of your minimap. At least this is how I do it. Again, there's many ways to do this. This one. Um, but yeah, head in this general direction. So I think a thing that works for, well for a lot of people from this point is to look down and see this. So they see this blue texture below me. This is where we're trying to land. Um, so if you feel like you're going in the wrong direction, you can aim a bit more towards that. Um, but yeah, so what you want is once you see the elevator thing show up on your minimap, you generally want to land on the right side of it. So there's a the triangle on the bottom, the triangle on the top, and there's like the rectangular part in the middle. So you want to land like on the right edge next to the the tip of the right where the triangle meets the um, the tip of the triangle the vertex of the triangle meets the rectangular part of that little um, thing so like right around here if we're thinking about so right around you know when we're looking at this transition thing it's you know the right triangle and the bottom triangle on the right that's where we're trying to land And if you're not exact, it's usually is okay. Like, generally this probably will work. No, this did not work. Okay. Well, again. Like I said, it's, it's, it's very hard for me to explain how to do this and do it fast at the same time. Do it properly at the same time. So, hopefully that will at least give you an idea of like what you're trying to do here. But yeah, I need to be more over to the left than I was. So, I generally like like, like to go the, um, have this X thing go off to the bottom, but not exactly. Like, so I'm kind of heading a bit more left. So it goes off a bit to the right of exactly the bottom of my minimap. And yeah. I usually turn a bit more at this point. Um, personally, I have a good, f like, feel for it. Um, but yeah. Keep heading here, and this should work this time. Okay. Once you're here, you're going to run all the way to this edge here. Okay, so this part is tricky, so I'm going to save here just to kind of demonstrate what the problems can be. So if you just head straight off here, you're just going to fall and be stuck. So you don't want to do that. So basically what you need to do is hug this last thing as much as you can, and then kind of go right around the corner and then 
backwards a bit. So like that. So you see what I did here? So I'm like this, go forward a bit, and then back. And we should get on top of the trim. And once you're on top of the trim, you can just go over here in front of the doors and drop down. And then you want to take the tram to Rift Station. here has changed a bit. Um, there are basically two alternate ways you can do this part. This way is now the fastest way, so that's the way I'll show off. Um, but there is another way that's basically just as fast. Um, but it's a bit slower because we don't get as much experience or uh, credits. You know, so it's a bit slower for the overall route, but it gets us into the Benezia fight faster. Um, the alternate way. But this way is a bit easier anyways, so um, I would definitely recommend doing it this way. But yeah, so uh, again, grenade to go up, or run through that area, go up the elevator, and then go into this cutscene here. So generally talking to him gets you in a bit faster than just running in uh, and waiting for it to automatically trigger. Hell, man the perimeter. Okay, then turn around, run past him, run. You may want to make sure you don't fatigue yourself here. Uh, and you just want to keep running straight through here here. Go straight some more. So you should head right near this guard past the Elcor on the left. And through here. And you're gonna get to this lock here. You're gonna use Omni Gel Warning. to open Watch the door. And it's gonna put you in combat with all of these guys up here. You wanna probably put in barrier to make sure you don't take damage. And try to kill some of these guys as best you can. There's a lot of explosive canisters here which can help. She will get you some, you know, extra experience and um, some credits as well, which is good. This door takes a while to open, just keep that in mind. I'm not sure, really sure why. And then you go down the elevator. So unfortunately this alarm sound will just be going on the whole rest of the mission. Um, there's not really anything you can do about that, so... It's pretty annoying, but... It's just something you have to deal with. Okay. So now we're gonna grab these two... Uh, kits of things. Then we're going to go into our inventory, take everything, um, and we're going to be looking for anti-personnel rounds here. Your second best choice if you don't have any sort of anti-personnel rounds is uh, chemical rounds. Um, and blow those up. Um, if you want, for safety, you can check if he has some sort of armor here. It doesn't even matter if it's human armor or not. So there's a glitch you can use to equip eyes. I would say um, so here's how you do it. Basically what happens is you go in here, pick some armor upgrade to equip, and just mash, click, or like click really fast and equip. And it should um, give you the option to transfer install things to a new item, which means it'll be trying to equip the top armor in this list. And that's what it'll do. So now we have Turian armor equipped, even though we're human, which gives us a bit better stats. So again, um, this is just give you some extra health and safety, which is not necessarily a bad idea. Um, but it's up to you. Tech and biotic protection is definitely good, and we no longer have any of that with this armor, so it's up to you whether or not you would want to use one or the other. Also, in general, things you're looking for stuff like um, um, shock absorbers is a good one. Um, Toxic seals, if you have a choice for there, but it's not none of those really make a huge difference. Um, and then whatever regeneration, health regeneration one is called. Okay, and then you're gonna want to level up here. So if correct, you should have. Uh, if you did it correct, you should have enough points to level up. Um, all, you should be level seven, and you should have enough points to go all the way up to advanced throw, and also grab a lift. And you want to make sure you bind the lift, because we're about to go into the Venezia fight. Okay, sounds like the alarms actually didn't go off, but they don't always go off. Okay, and then when we enter this room, it's, when we go up here, we're going to get into the cutscene. But we kind of want to enter it sideways. Um, because we want to be facing a direction such that we can tell our party members to go stand over in this corner that's going to be opposite the way we're facing now. 
because they're basically the enemies here come from two opposite corners and we want to be in one corner and our party to be in the other and the best opportunity we have to send them over here is them. okay now you're going to quickly activate um marksmen and try to kill both these are sorry sometimes it might be advantageous to use throw here to knock them down or blow up the um canisters to deal some damage to them but that's really up to you what you want to do and whatever you want to knock down uh, this sorry commander in some way um, whether it's by uh, lift or throw is up to you um, if you've already used throw uh, use lift or if you haven't you can just use throw I feel it's easier to line up a throw so if you have throw I would recommend using that there because it tends to be a bit better um, Sometimes, so you want to singularity these guys, and sometimes when you do that, it'll like lock your camera position, it'll be kind of screwed up. If you just open and close, open your menu and close it, it'll let you face the right way, or like, it'll follow which way you're facing again. And here you want to knock down Benezia somehow if you can, um, or lift her, and then you want to generally try to kill these, sorry, as fast as possible. Generally, again, lifting them or knocking them down somehow is the best way to do that. Okay, that was really fast. That honestly might be the fastest I've ever done. Like, one of the fastest I've ever done the three commandos there. It's pretty funny for a tutorial. Okay. So now we're just going to move right quickly to enter this cutscene with the Rat Knight Queen. So we want to intentionally be making the um, renegade choice here. So one thing I will need to point out to you that hasn't been relevant here and won't really be relevant again for a while is that when you're using mouse wheel to skip through dialogue, you're doing it basically frame perfectly. You're doing it as quickly as it except invoice for that. But for some reason, for the first frame of every dialogue, it just defaults to the position being um, on the middle option rather than being on whatever direction you were last aiming in. So you want to make sure you're not actually doing this with mouse wheel. Generally I would just try to do space bar through this one because you want to be pecking all the renegade choices. And then once once you get you'll die here by my hand, that's when you can just use mouse wheel for the rest of the dialogue skipping. So yeah, you want to be picking the renegade option here though. Um, it's faster for the route to go renegade. Okay, and now we're done with Novaria essentially. So, we're just gonna use some grenades to run back to where the tram is. Um, wow, that's bad. Yeah, so those canisters are most of the time blown up when you get to this point, so it's usually not a problem that you would blow yourself up there, but that's why I was careful. Um, you could use two grenades here if you want to. Um, I probably will. So the next thing I need to point out is when we talked back at the beginning of this mission about the weapon swapping glitch, so the main useful thing to use that for is to skip cutscenes right when you get back on the ship. So basically what you do is just spin your mouse wheel as you're loading in um, when you get back onto the Normandy. Um, and as it's like fading in from black into stuff that's visible, you want to quick save, bring up your menu, and load. Um, because you only can like, you don't actually have your gun out, it like, it like, it like lets you swap and then takes your guns away from you. So it doesn't last that long before it'll just force you into the cutscene anyways. Um, so you want to make sure you do it quick enough that you quick save and load before it forces you into the cutscene. So generally what I would say is just start spinning your mouse wheel to skip weapons as soon as you, um, you know, maybe even as soon as you hit the button. It's not, um, too hard. You don't need to do it super fast yet. You can just, um, once you get to this point you should be spinning fast. Quick save as it's black there. You don't even necessarily need to pop, wait for the thing to pop up. You should just feel it, like, lag a bit. Um... Or like hopefully you can notice it lag a bit and you should be able to load it and if you did it properly you should see a quick save you could quickly like check 
should be a quick save on the Normandy command deck. And if you, that means you got the quick save off. If not, you kind of just have to watch the cutscene because you won't have another opportunity to save before it'll bring you into the cutscene. Okay, and that gets us done with our first planet. The next planet we're going to is Pharos. So Pharos is probably the most difficult combat section to get good at the um, Thorian fight. Um, so I'll try my best to explain through that, but it's... The best way to learn how to do this section is like use the explanation I have, watch what I do in an actual run, and then kind of combine that together and test it out yourself. Um, so you can Rocket feel like, feel your way through it. Because I'll be like slowing down for sure to explain stuff, and that won't like have the right pacing of how it actually is in a run. So um, like for, for example, like how long abilities take to get off cooldown and stuff like that. Um, which is really important in the Thorian fight. So I just want to notify you that in advance that I will be, you know, slowing down to explain things as best I can, but overall you're going to really need to um, make sure you um, just, you know, practice it enough to get a feel for it. So again, we're going to see some more things that give us extra experience here, so you can just grab this. There's one there, there's two here. You want to be at 5,500 experience when you enter um, the Thorian fight. Generally, this shouldn't be a problem, but if you've missed out on a lot of stuff in the Maker section, um, you may want to make sure you slow down and get Last, some of these the Geth here killed. Exo Presley has the deck. So, in general, we want to try to avoid killing these Geth as much as possible, because we can use them on the way back to the ship to get in combat and sprint a bit uh, to get back to the ship a bit faster, but you know rather than just walking all the way. So generally what you want to do is just not kill any of them. Um, and then, you know, use both barrier and um, metagel every time, basically, to make sure you don't get killed. But if you're having problems getting killed there, I would recommend just using uh, singularity as soon as you get out of the cutscene. So you can lift a bunch of the geth up, because it should kill them with the fall damage, and it'll certainly at least prevent them from shooting at you. Okay, so, uh, Ferris is actually a relatively straightforward planet because we can go out of bounds to clip directly into the Thorian fight. So if you remember this from your casual playthrough, you eventually get back here, you lift up this container, and you go down the stairs, which you can actually see through the floor there, um, to get to where the Thorian is. So you just quick save and reload against that little, um, crate there, and you'll clip down below the container. And, you know, just keep heading forward, and you'll hit this cutscene. So, since we should be the correct level here, um, we should, so we should be 11 here. If you have 5,500 experience, you'll hit 11. And now you want to level up pistols to hit advanced marksman, which is at 8 points. You want to level up warp to hit advanced warp, which is at 6 points. And you want to put 1 point in vanguard, which just gives you some extra bonus damage. Uh, just it's just like a free point to spend on basically whatever we want uh, but this gives us five percent pistol and shotgun damage and um fire protection as well so just some bonus damage basically um for a point that you know it's basically it's just a throwaway point that we don't need to spend anything else okay and then we're just gonna enter this cutscene here uh, we got dialogue so you know you can just skip through this dialogue really quick and what you're going to want to do as soon as you get out of the cutscene is just hit use throw immediately to knock down this Asari. So one thing that's really important for any Asari that you're fighting both back on Venezia and here is to knock them down as quickly as possible so they can't knock you down as well. Because if you get knocked down by them using throw, you are very likely to die. So you want to knock them down and really focus on killing them first before you worry about any other enemies. Now we can use Sparksman to take these creepers out really quick. So generally what you're going to be trying to do for all of these nodes is using a combination of Marksman and a Warp. So Warp will 
bring down the damage resistance of the node and do a little bit of um, other stuff to it. Um, and then you can use Marksman to do a lot of damage to it really fast. You need to balance dealing damage to the node with killing creepers. So killing both the Asari and the Asari clones and the creepers also reduces the damage resistance of um, the node itself. So you don't need to kill every single one, but you do need to kill a significant number if you want to take down the node really fast. So this is again something you just have to get by practicing it a bunch or trying it a bunch, but you can use what I'll use. The number I'll kill in this tends to, tends to be somewhere between like 60 and 80 percent of the creepers, um, depending on the node, uh, to give you an idea of like the extent of what you'll need to do to take down a node fast. should also be really paying attention to whether or not you're poisoned or your teammates are poisoned here and be using Metagel as necessary to heal them up because you really don't want either yourself or any of your teammates to die during this fight. Okay, now quickly we want to have the uh, lift ready so we can make sure we lift Sasari up before she hits us and knocks us down. Okay, then we want to run over to this weapon locker here and take whatever it has, because we need still need more credits to sell stuff, and this is like the highest level stuff we've been able to see so far during this fight, and um, yeah. So this is the one node where you don't want to use either a marksman or um, warp. This is just for uh, ability ma managing ability cooldowns. Um, this one is, tends to not actually have a lot of damage resistance as well, which is why we picked the specific one. So you want to focus, again, focus this sorry down. Another thing that I should mention is that Singularity tends to be a good way of dealing with lots of creepers at once. Um, also, running up and mealing them is actually not a bad strategy because it prevents them from breathing their acid crap all over you. But okay, now we're going to try to kill some of these more. So this one actually requires killing quite a few creepers before you can start damage it. But then eventually at some point you're going to want to use uh, warp and then quickly automatically use a, um, like basically right afterwards you use um, adrenaline burst to get your abilities back off cooldown. Um, because this node is actually the worst one to do. You really need to have it for both of these two nodes which both require a pretty significant amount of um, damage dealt before you can to the creepers before you can start to really hit them. So, not a bad place to use um, Singularity again. And at this point we're probably good to do this. Yes. Okay, and now we've got Asari clone. So here you only really need to kill the Asari clone to be able to do enough damage to, the le to this node here. So, in general, you're going to have a lot of problems with abilities being on cooldown now when you get up here. Um, but you should have at least throw off cooldown, which is really important because you want to get this Asari down. Okay, now you basically just need to kill creeper, a bunch of creepers, and you need to kill it without having really any access to abilities. So you need to be careful about getting overheated, which, as you can see, I got overheated yet. And then as soon as Marksman comes off cooldown, you really just want to use it to kill a bunch of creepers. Okay, and then we're going to try to run through here, and we're going to have to try to kill this last Asari without being able to knock her down. So, having Marksman up to do that is pretty important. Okay, and as you can see, this one takes quite a bit to even be able to start to damage it. But, at some point, we can go like this and start to damage it. Generally, this node, depending on how fast you are, you probably won't have Marksman back um, to use... Uh, but you may ha get a, um, you may get adrenaline burst off cooldown at some point around here, and you can use that to give yourself marksman back. And also, when, once you get the last Asari clone down, you can feel free to use uh, 
a throw and lift as necessary to help you get rid of creepers. But now we're done with this fight. Okay, so now we're coming to the point after this cutscene where uh, the, f the um, so we've gotten past the point where we really need to worry about our experience. The last place we really need to worry about it was to have 5,500 by the you know near the, around the beginning of this fight. So we get both advanced marksmen and advanced work for this fight. Um, I should mention that it's not a big deal if you um, don't have it immediately at the beginning of this fight. Um, if you get, you can generally get a decent amount of experience from killing the first Asari clone right at the beginning when you see the cutscene and the two creepers there, and then level up them. If, if you're not leveled up by then, I'm not sure what to say, but generally that's the latest I've ever had to worry about not having enough experience um, for this fight. But yeah, so. Once you get past that part, we're basically past where experience starts to matter. I mean, we do still want to go out of our way a bit to kill it, or we still want to kill enemies as much as we can, but we don't really need to go out of our way to really make sure we're a certain level for quite a while during the run. Um, but, so we are coming up to the point where getting all this loot and stuff to get credits is going to matter. Um, so this is very sketchy. You may or may not have enough credits depending on what luck you get with weapon drops and stuff um, and Like random drops um, So it's hard to say whether or not for sure that you will be able to do this But there's a vendor right here named Ledra. You're gonna want a quick save because you can have two different ranks of the gun We're trying to buy uh, either the rank 4 or the rank 5. We have well, there's zero chance We will have enough credits for the rank 5 which costs twice as much as the rank 4. You should have Maybe after you sell stuff, barely enough for the four, which is what our goal is, to have enough credits to buy the four. Um, sometimes he will not have the four, um, and he'll only have the five. Most of the time, I think he has both, which is why I quick save there. If you quick save before entering the inventory, um, you can reload to check again. Okay, and he did not have it this time, so he only had the five, as you can see. So if we reload our save, we can see if he has the four. The Stellaro just happens to be like one of the best guns we can get in the run. Five is technically the best one we can get by a random drop, so now see he has the four. So now we're just gonna try to sell everything. The easiest way to do this is hit enter a lot of times. Okay, and we're like a hundred credits short, so that's really dumb. Um Let's see if we can manage this. So ideally obviously you don't wanna have to be worrying about um, doing stuff like this. I'm going to try to just switch to this crappy armor and crappy gun again before selling, because those might be worth slightly thought, more. Forgive my previous inaction, but under the Thorian, I'll show you what I have. Okay, let's try this again. Wow, that still didn't make enough of a difference. Uh, yeah, so we don't have enough credits for the gun, which is bad. You don't want that to happen. Um, I don't know if there's any way I can go get credits easily. Because uh, I want to demonstrate this while actually having... Okay, here's what I'm going to do. This is n obviously not something you want to do during the actual one. But I'm going to go down, kill these geth. That should give me enough credits to go buy it. So I just want to demonstrate how you should approach the run given um, enough... Uh, given optimal circumstances. Um, if you don't have enough credits during an actual run, what you should do is you should just go forward through it, and there's weapon lockers. You can you will go past on a Therum and Vermeer, and that is where you should go for getting enough credits, um, or getting extra credits. So killing those guys at the beginning also might have been a good thing for me to do to get some extra credits. So I would also, I would definitely recommend doing it for that reason, as long as you don't kill all of them. So. That should get you enough extra credits, because those guys tend to have a decent number of credits on them, like a hundred each. So we're gonna go back up to this guy. Greeting. Let me see what you. I'll show you what I have. Okay, we're gonna buy the stiletto. Okay, and then equip it. Basically, right away. 
So as you can see, it still has really good. It does twice as much damage as the pistol wave at the beginning of the game, and it still does like, you know, basically 50% more than the pistol I was using before I bought it. Now let's say 177 over 112, whatever that is. Not that much more, like 60, 60 more damage. Uh, yeah, so over 50% more damage um, than the gun I was previously using. So it's a huge difference. Um, so yeah. Try to kill you know, some of the guys. Generally, the ones right here, um, get them with a, a uh, singularity as you're coming in, rather than on the way out, like I did going back. Um, if you're just practicing, though, and you don't have enough credits, this could be a decent way to go grab some if you just want to practice and make sure you have enough credits. Um, That's it. Bag him and tag him. Yeah, and then you're gonna enter the ship. So this is not really a cutscene you can realistically skip. So you're just gonna watch this Stand one. By, sure um, it is possible to skip, but it's really, really mm -hmm. hard, and it's only possible if you have a bad computer. Because it doesn't account? really save much time either. Okay, so I can explain really quick what you have to do though. I can't do it on my computer because my computer is too fast. Um, but as you are loading in, so after you hit the button to enter the re-enter the norm menu. You want to smash quick save and it'll keep saying quick save failed and then briefly it'll say quick save successful and then it'll lag the game just enough that you have time to bring up the menu uh, to reload your save. And then as you're reloading that save and then you need to do the weapon swapping to uh, delay the cutscene from starting and then quick save again and reload again. And it's just to save the five second cutscene that I watched there or something. So it uh, it definitely, I'm not sure that it's worth Good it, but um, I figured I'd explain it anyways. Uh, okay, so then you're gonna get your message that, about Vermeer mission. You just mm -hmm. go back and talk about, talk to them about that. But we're not gonna go to Vermeer yet. We're gonna go to Theron first. To get Liara. So this is our next um, Mako driving section, the King of Therum. So, um, learning how to do the Mako section properly in Therum is honestly, I think, one of the most difficult things for most new runners to learn in the game. It's some tricks you have to do while driving the Mako um, that can be difficult to learn. Um, can be very tricky. So I'll try my best to explain them, um, but one of them is just really hard to get a f like to explain in words, and you just really need to get a feel for it yourself. So here you can just cut this corner if you're careful and don't s touch the lava. Not to save a you know, few fractions of a second. So, got a little bit more driving before our first Mako um, trick comes up. You can try to kill, there's going to be two armatures that spawn here, you can try to kill them if you want to, but like I said, experience doesn't matter as much at this point, so um, feel free to do it, like the experience won't hurt, and we do want to be a certain level like way later in the run, but you have plenty of other areas to worry about um, driving experience between now and then. But yeah. Now from here on out, you just want to like try to kill stuff while you're driving in the Maker, don't, but don't slow yourself down to do it. Okay, so here's our first trick. There's a gate here that's blocked off, and it's supposed to go around. We so we want to go... Um, so there's three turrets here. There's one on the left, one kind of in the slightly right of center, and one that's like all the way to the right. We want to drive our Maker towards the one that's on the right, 
and we'll kind of go up a little incline. And as we're going up that incline, we want to boost up a bunch. Like, so hold it down for a bit, and then release the boost button, and then to mash the boost button to get some extra distance. So I'll try to show that off here. Uh, this one tends to be a bit easier for most people. So we're up the incline, mash. And I, no, oh, slightly wrong. You can always retry this one um, by doing something like this. So I probably jumped a bit okay, too early. And I'm not getting on top. Okay, let me back up more so I can actually get the acceleration. So, this is, I, I may have failed this, but this one is actually very easy to do. Again, doing stuff without explaining it and doing it like while explaining it at the same time. Much harder. So again, line up like this. It's still going too early. Okay, now we're on top. Um, so the one thing I want to point out is you want to go off to the right above this um, thing on the right, um, not across the actual gate itself, as if you can, because the actual gate itself has like a lot of invisible walls above it um, that can be hard to get past. So go above the little like thing up, um, on the edge of the gate. This like um, I don't know what you want to call this gate room. So there's a, if you didn't grab the gun, this is one of the weapon lockers you want to check for a better gun. Like if you didn't have enough credits. Um, this just as a reminder. Um, so for safety here, I am probably going to repair. Generally you won't have to do this, but since I took so much damage trying to go over the gate like five times, um, I'm going to do it. Obviously, you don't want to just completely stop from moving like this during the run, so avoid it if possible. This armature here tends to be one that's pretty easy to make sure you actually kill, so I usually try to kill him. This one too is also reasonably easy to kill, so again, kill him. We're just trying to grab free experience here and there where we can. And head up the hill. And pass. Mako driving, and then we have our next Mako trick to do. This one, second one, tends to be a lot harder for most people than the first one. Um, the first one is like once you get down to a rhythm, it's very, um, it's like much harder to mess it up. This one is like um, very easy relative to the first one to make a mistake on, um, and it's a lot harder to like learn how to do properly for most people. From what I that I've talked to in the past, um, and, like the best way to learn how to do this one properly is just try it a bunch of times. But I will try to explain my approach to it as best I can. Um, so to make sure I don't screw this up, so it's possible to get stuck when you're doing this one in soft lock. So I'm going to kill these guys so I can make a save here. Okay probably actually make it closer to this. Okay. So what we're going to be trying to do is, that, see, there's this little gap here. So you're supposed to be, this is supposed to force you to get out of the Mako and um, walk on foot, but we don't want to do that. So it is possible to clip the Mako through there. So that's what we're going to try to do. So here's what we do. We head straight at it, and there's, there's this right side here and the left side here. So what we're going to try to do is kind of angle ourselves just slightly to the left like this 
as we're going through. So I will try to show that off. Okay, so basically if you look at my wheels, I want to be lined up such that my head is kind of like where it is now, and then the, the wheel on the right is going through on the right side like that. If I do this like this, um, it's not going to work. So I'm too far to the um, left there. You can tell by where I'm getting stuck. Or like which way the maker is facing when I get stuck. So now I'm stuck kind of like right side a bit. So you're just going to need to keep adjusting your position a little bit left and right. Back up a little bit as well usually. Um, okay, but once you're looking something like this, this is where you can make it in. The one problem is if you look on the right here, on the other side of it, there is this little piece of rock that's basically standing straight up, and that's kind of right where my um, the nose of the car is pointed at. We don't want to hit into that. That's where we'll get stuck and soft locked. So we want to try to move a left a bit once we get around the bend a bit to dodge hitting that, like what I'm doing now. And you may need to back up a bit and move around a bit to adjust yourself to land on the other side. But that's essentially what you're trying to do here. Um, try to show that off again so you can get a feel for what it looks like some more. So again, approach like this, slightly to the left or right, oh, oh, sorry, left of center. Okay, so this here will work. Um, once you get like the front wheel kind of through, that from that point you can always make it through. And this is exactly the situation I said you don't want to get caught in, which is getting stuck on that thing. I actually didn't get quite quite all the way, so I was able to adjust myself enough to fix it. Okay, now we're here. Driving the Mako in here can be difficult, because um, you're not supposed to have the Mako in here. So I try to kill some of these guys, and you're going to want to get used to jumping over some of these rocks. So that rock there and this rock here tend to be ones I try to jump over. Now we're faced with another difficult passage. This one's not as bad as the first one. We got this rock on the left and the rock on the right in front of us. They're supposed to be getting used as cover, but generally you want to try to boost over them as best you can. Uh, and from here, just run over these guys, um, dodge this little rock on the left, go up the hill a bit. You know, I'm trying to do this a bit slow to just show it off. You need to get around the corner. You want to turn like around, or get up here and turn around to the left. Go up like this. And you're going to be bouncing around a bit once you land up here because the train is really not good for the Mako. And you want to head into this cutscene. So heading into this cutscene with the Mako um, has a pretty good advantage in that it just kind of disables all the enemy AI for some reason on this fight. So uh, it makes the armature very easy to kill. Generally what I like to do is take the armature's health down quite a bit by first using a rocket to take down its shields and then using the machine gun to take its health down really low and then pop out of the thing and just do the last two or three shots of damage with my gun because you get more damage or you get more experience killing things on foot than you do in a mango. So like that and then just get out on foot and go like this. The armature is the only enemy you need to kill here before you go down to the mines. Um, just as a reference. All, so all the other geth you can completely ignore. Now we're in the mines. So you are usually in combat for a little bit here. There's some guys here, but for some reason, shooting here doesn't really get you into combat with them. And I'm not really sure why, but you really have to get pretty close up before you can get in combat. So there's three geth to kill here, two down there, one over here. And they should go into this corner here, and we're going to quick save and load. And this will just clip us down to the bottom of the mine. Um, the top of it. And here we're going to, you know, grenade ourselves to get in combat a bit. Um, so we want to now tell our party members to stand, like, right around here. Because for some reason, once you walk past this thing that starts to uh, proceed towards a cutscene, if you go over and talk to one of your teammates, just like hit E on them, it'll start the cutscene right away, rather than you having to wait for everything Liar is going to say before it pulls you into the cutscene. Okay. Now we shoot to get in combat. Run down the ramp. There's four geth here, I think, to kill. 
So make sure you kill all of them. So one here, two here, and there's one behind that rock over there. Sniper. Okay, from there we have this mining laser to deal with. So this has a completely random pattern on PC, unlike on console, which you, some people may or may not be familiar with. That's a pretty bad pattern. Um, but then, again, if you have another grenade, use it to run back up to where Liara is. So we need to activate the mining laser to hit some you know, mission triggers, but we don't actually need to go through the hold opens. So we can now just clip through and talk to Liara uh, and proceed to the end of the mission. Where we have the Krogan Battlemaster fight. Now I So the most important thing for this fight is just knock down the Battle Master right away. So you use throw, and then just use marks to take out all the enemies as quickly as you can. Assuming you have a good gun like I do now, this fight should go relatively quickly. Um, as long as you make sure you kill the Krogan Battle Master while he's still knocked down. So, knock him down. So there's two there, one there. And there's the one that usually runs the same direction as the Krogan Battlemaster. Um, so one thing I'll note while I'm at this point is that some people tend to have this problem. Um, but this cutscene and some other cutscenes in the game are really loud in relation to other stuff. Um, there's really not so much you can do about this. Basically what you should do is set all your in-game volume settings to be max. So music sound effects, all of them to be max, and then just turn down your, you know, desktop sound. That's the only way to make this, but that's like the best way to make this cutscene and some other cutscenes not super loud in relation to the rest of the game. Um, because they, this cutscene and certain cutscenes always play at max volume no matter what. So if you set everything to max volume and just turn down your PC settings, it'll keep it from being significantly louder. Okay, now we're going to do the weapon swapping again as we're loading into the ship. Uh, so weapon swap, follow the same instructions I said basically after Novaria, um, and it's essentially exactly the same as that. And now we're headed to Vermeer. Okay, so one thing I'm going to say about Vermeer at the start is you may be inclined to bring Liara with you now that you have her. Do not do that. Um, you cannot bring Liara with you right here. Um, bring Caden and Tally still. We'll deal with. We'll use Liara later, but we're not going to use her right now. Check out those defense towers. And it's really important for if we're going to do later on that you don't make her for this part. Get you in underneath radar. Which may not be make any sense right now, but it'll make more sense when we get to later part of this mission. And later part of the run. So this Mako driving section has a, a couple small tricks. It's not nearly as uh, difficult as... Um, the theorem section though. So again, most of what we're going to do here is just try to kill random enemies while we're driving around. Oh, one thing I didn't mention at all is important. Oh man, where am I going to mention this? Should have mentioned this at the beginning. Is that you want to have all the achievements unlocked all the ones that give you any sort of bonus for this run. Um, so yeah, if you don't have that and you made it this far into the run and you're wondering why things are going wrong, do that. I'll try to make sure I put this in the description for the video too though. Uh, you want to try to rocket this set of shields here so you can 
cut this corner more, um, more radically than you would rather just go around it. So just continue to kill guys here. And then here the fastest way is to turn left. Cut this corner here. Um, these armatures are usually pretty hard to kill fast enough without um, before you get past them, so I wouldn't usually worry about trying to kill them. I mean you could idly shoot like at them like I am, but don't worry about actually trying to kill them generally. Okay, so the main trick you're trying to do with the Mako the section is the sections where you're supposed to get out. You want to park it on the left, um, right, right around here, so that you can try to enter the Mako from above without having to walk all the way back down. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, you don't want to park it like right below because you won't be able to hit it there, and you don't want to park it too far away because you also won't be able to hit it there. So it may take a bit of practice to get a feel for like where it is but you have it's pretty generous uh, so here you want to hit these two things if again if you don't have a good gun by this point you want to open this weapon locker to try to get some better gun um, but since I already have a good gun I'm not going to worry about it and yeah so we can get back into the make like that and we're gonna do the same thing at this next gate as well um, basically park in essentially the same exact position and try to do the exact same thing also, one thing you want to generally try to do, these, both this gate and the previous gate, is to tell your teammates to stay down here because you don't want them to kill everyone uh, so that you would get pulled out of combat. Um, yeah, And generally you want a barrier to make sure you don't take too much damage here and um, like lift and throw these two destroyers down so they don't kill you. But if necessary, slow down to make sure you kill these destroyers if they're like on top of you attacking you because they will kill you um, if you're not careful enough. And now we can head to the Slarian camp. So, as far as the Slarian camp goes, um, to make to say, you know, do Vermeer optimally, like save the, you know, do Vermeer as fast as possible. Um, we're gonna want to make a, like whatever person we want to keep alive, we are going to want to s keep with us rather than send with um, Captain Kiri. So, if you want to uh, keep Kaden alive, send Ashley with Captain Kiri here or vice versa. Um, it's probably slightly faster to keep Kaden alive, so, um, so I would definitely recommend Stay doing that. The default, if you skip through this dialogue really quick, will be to essentially make well, the choice that will keep Ashley alive, so um, because it'll send Kaden with him. Uh, so I'm going to go through this dialogue slowly. So the well, option you end up, you I have to skip one through one. When it says that's a bold request, that's the last option right. before you're so picking the person to send. You want to send, take Ashley here. And then after that, you don't care. Um, you have to watch a little bit of this dialogue. Once he gets past, I share your concerns in what he's talking about. You can skip past the rest of the speech. For some reason, it makes you watch the first part of that. Again, no Liara with us. Okay. Shoot over here. Generally get in combat. Not really sure what's been going on with the targeting things of appearing above all the enemies' heads so far this run. Never seen that happen before. Um, but in general, don't expect stuff like that to happen during your runs. I've never seen that happen before. Probably some weird bugginess from me reloading saves or something. Probably if I had completely shut down the game at some point, it wouldn't have been happening. Uh, but I'm not really sure. Okay. So here you're just going to continue run. You're going to basically be running past lots of enemies and not really killing much of anything. Um, you can kill these guys just because it's very easy to kill them without slowing down at all. 
Krog is probably a good one to always try to kill though, because he can deal some major damage to you. Uh, around the corner here to the right, which is where we're going to be going, is a destroyer. Um, sometimes he is up there, sometimes he's more down on this ramp already. That depends. Uh, you just want to usually lift him, and that's all you really need to worry about. Your teammates will usually take care of the rest with him. You don't necessarily need to kill that rocket trooper, but again, not too difficult to do it without... Uh, you know, with no slowing down or anything at all, so you can usually just kill him as you're walking by. And then we're gonna run for this door here. It may look like I'm at risk of getting hurt a lot there, but as long as you barrier, you can never really die there, because the enemies will despawn behind you. Okay, this button here is really hard to hit, that's all I can say here. Uh, so generally what I like to do is aim downwards, so I'm- because it tries to like think you're aiming over at the locked door button, you have to actually hit the terminal to open it. Um, so yeah, I don't really have anything to say there other than that, that happens. You may need to adjust which way you're facing a bit to make sure you don't actually... Um, there? You actually hit the, the terminal button and not hit the door which is locked and it doesn't do anything. But it... Okay. So this fight here, there's a there's a, the doctor, the scientist, and a husk that will spawn at the beginning. You want to try to kill all of them as fast as possible because the door will open as soon as you get out of combat. Um, which, if you do it fast enough, will be before the rest of the husks come out. Um, which, even though I got overloaded there, ended up happening that time, so that's good. Um, and those are as soon as you get out of combat, you can go through that door. Those guys will eventually despawn when you head out here, even if you didn't kill them. And then we're going to go over to the bridge, and then quick save against it. For some reason, even th so there, there's collision for the bridge to block you, or block you from walking through it, sort of, but not really. And the collision for the bridge, you know, below you is still just there, like where it's supposed to be when it's lowered. Okay, so we can just quick save there twice, you know, once to get... Um, past the blocked part on each side. And then, again, just more grenading. If you have more than one grenade here, you should also use another grenade as soon as you get off fatigue. Um, so, like, right around, you know, here or so. But if you don't have another grenade, you can just generally to shoot as you're coming around this corner and you'll eventually get in combat before you make it all the way up and actually see the enemies. So you don't necessarily need to kill these Geth drones, but they can do a lot of damage to you, so I'd recommend trying to. Again, um, you always want to open this thing no matter what for some potential um, rounds and stuff. But there's a gun one here as well that you would open if you still didn't have like, once again, if you hadn't bought a gun on, um, on Pharaohs. I'm gonna throw these guys and just finish off the last one. Usually there's one of them that won't die if you just use throw. He'll take some damage, though. Okay. So, we're heading into the end part of this mission now. So, you want to not try to kill these guys if you can, because you want to just continue to use the combat from them to sprint even some more after you get past them. Okay. Now, once you head in here, you need to make sure, like, at some point before you get into this cutscene, you need to go into your settings menu, go to gameplay, and turn off auto level up. From squad only to off. You're going to need to sp pick specific abilities on Liara. Um, which is why we didn't want to take Liara at any point before now. Right. Nice work. That's one less thing to worry about. Commander, I'm bringing us in. I'll get as close to the site as I can. And once we go through this cutscene here, we're going to be doing a bunch of leveling up and equipping stuff as well.
bomb is in Okay, so now we can take Liara and Tally. So here I'm gonna go into this, equip so what you're looking for now is tungsten rounds or some or um armor piercing rounds if you were unlucky and didn't get a high enough level. So anything four and above is called tungsten. Uh, anything three and below is called um, armor piercing, but they have the same advantage damage versus next. So that's what you should be looking for here, and if you, you know, had been looting looking for a better gun, um, get one here. Okay, so here you want to get intimidate up to nine. Um, max out throw, max out pistols, and dump our remaining points in lift. So we should have maxed out pistols, maxed out throw, five points in lift, and nine points in intimidate. It'd be level 20 by this point. Okay. Now here's where we need to worry about leveling up other teammates. So all we really care about on Liara is having master uh, singularity. So you need to level up um, singularity to here before you or sorry warp to here before you unlock singularity. You can master hit master and then hit auto level up. Skip remaining talents um, for Liara. And now we'll go to try to finish up the remainder of this planet. So, what is going on? Having that weird stuff happen in this fight. Generally, this fight is much easier than this one. This one. Okay. So, once again, there's one last place you can try to get a better gun here if you still don't have a good gun. Um, generally, I would say anything like. Worse than a rank three like edge, so like anything that does like a hundred and the hundred tens of damage, or like even maybe a hundred twenties of damage. I would probably look this crate here to see if I can get one less chance at a better pistol because we really want to be doing as much damage as possible. But again, so now we're gonna enter this cutscene. So the important part here is we're gonna pick the right option, one of the right options, once or twice, sorry, and then when you get the option to rescue Caden or Ashley, or whatever, whenever you get the option to rescue someone here, you always pick the person on the left uh, to do this optionally. And once you pick that person, you can just skip through the rest of the dialogue. And then we're going to go over here. This is just a way to clip back down to where the bomb is faster. Um, so we can go over this wall. This one is really important to be careful. We have a very narrow ledge to land on, so you want to make sure you turn all the way and then just kind of walk along this. So hold W and kind of face this way, because if you move anywhere to the left at all, you'll fall down. And now your goal is to just kill all these geth as fast as possible um, using singularity, not singularity, using warp on the prime is, even though I didn't do it there, is probably not a bad idea. If you did use that, it's also not a bad idea to activate. Um, Adrenaline burst to get all your movies back off cooldown. So here's why we needed Intimidate 9. We want to make a specific Intimidate option with Saren, and this is also part of the reason we've been going Renegade so far. Um, the, we got guaranteed Renegade points from the what we did on um, uh, Pharos with Athorian. Like, basically treated us like we were as Renegade as possible in terms of determining whether or not we got points. Um, so yeah. So we want to be picking the top uh, right, uh, or like, yeah, the top right option here um, to get to the right choice for saying it's already happened will give us eventually the option Sovereign will betray you, which is what we want to say here. And once we do that, we can feel free to go forward and do the fight. So one thing that's not a bad idea to do here, if you can, is just have one of your teammates pull up the crate, but generally they'll try to do it themselves if, um, or I guess it'd be Tally to blow it up. But generally, she, if he's right above a crate, he, she does a pretty good job of using the ability on him to blow him up. On her own. No, usually you don't need to tell them to do it. So again, once we get through the end of this planet, we're going to again do the weapon swapping thing as we load into the ship. Uh, and 
quick save and reload this game, uh, cutscene. So, you know, same thing we did after both uh, Novaria and Theron. So, when you see this cutscene of Shepard on the ship like that, that's a good place to start swapping weapons. And now we've gotten through all the major planets, um, so we have to head back to the Citadel before going to Ilus. Okay. So, one thing we've, um, so we've been doing the weapon swapping stuff already, but we haven't used one property of it that's actually really, really strange, um, and it isn't really useful anywhere else. But what we're going to want to do, as we're loading into the Citadel, the cutscene of Udina up in the council where they, you know, take our ship away from us, is we're going to be one of weapon swapping there and quick save, but we're not actually going to reload our save. So you'll see what I mean in a second. I forwarded the mission so as soon as you load in here, you start weapon swapping. Okay, let me quick save. We bring up our menu. Okay, rather than load, we're going to bring up the menu, go into some subscreen, so like squad, for example. Then exit back out, and now you'll see it says we're in conversation down here. And if we do that, for some reason, it just like skips ahead in the conversation. It gets us past like a part of the cutscene we couldn't skip past where it. Equalizing he's like, it's just politics, Commander. And he's like, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get your ship back eventually. It'll skip past that part. But, so we, we're not supposed to be able to get back on our ship here. But if we just quick save right against this part here, um, we'll get out of bounds. So that's what we're going to do. So one thing I would recommend as you're first learning this, this is a very good part point to make a backup save because it can be very easy to screw this um, out of bounds up and not be able to recover it. So again, do that, go out of bounds here. Okay, so this one is a really precise lineup, but essentially what we need to do is this green dot that I'm like standing on top of right now needs to be lined straight up below us. So we need to basically go in a straight line such that the um, marker for the elevator, the yellow one on the minimap, is like in a straight line with the green one and it, they're both behind us. So you'll see what I mean. So in a straight line like this, the yellow one and green are lined up like that. And then once the tip of the bottom triangle is touching the bottom of the minimap, we can just quick save and load. And once you load here, you don't want to press anything. Just let let it play through like this. So just don't be pressing any key at all. Just let go of the mouse. And you'll fall for a bit. And if you did it properly, you should land somewhere above the stairs, sometimes on the stairs directly. And now we're heading to... Negative contact. Now we're done with the whole, you know, our ship taken away with us sequence, and we can go to islands. So now Ilos. So Ilos has what is definitely the hardest trick in the run uh, to do, in my opinion, at least. Um, yes, and um, this th this trick is the reason why we had to make sure we had Master Singularity on Liara. Um, if we auto level up Liara, she won't even have anywhere close to Master Singularity, and Master Sing Singularity basically the only way to pull off this trick in a reasonable amount of time. Um, you otherwise need to use two or three singularities to do it if it's lower ranked ones, and it takes a lot longer, it's just not really feasible. 
So the most important thing to do here is to be able to make sure that Liar just doesn't use Master Singularity on or like use Singularity on her own against the enemies you're gonna be killing here. So what you wanna do as soon as you load in here is just tell your squad mates to stand like right where you're starting, which is not near any enemies, and they will just stay positioned there and won't attack anything and won't use any of their powers. You two keep moving inside. Yeah, so this is a trick I would definitely recommend practicing a lot. Um, as a recommendation, there's a whole bunch of practice saves for all different parts of this run on speedrun.com now. So if you want to get better at any specific part, it's a good place to start um, uh, for your practice. Okay, so what we need to kill, do here is kill basically everyone here other than... Um, couple enemies, which are the one troop, Gath Trooper all the way down there, and the armature that's further around the corner here. So the one I'm shooting at is the one you want to kill, the other one you want to ignore, basically. Okay. Now, here's the trick. So first thing we want to do is use throw on the um, box there that's further to the right when we're facing this way. And then we want to lift this crate. get underneath it while it's in the air and that'll clip us on top of it okay the next thing we need to do is we take Liara's singularity and then place it kind of at the so you see these leaves that are along the wall here place it basically at the corner of this one here and that should be enough to pull it and you kind of have to walk forward a bit while you're doing this otherwise you'll fall off the box so it takes some um, practice to do. But now that we're up here, we can proceed with the glitch. So what you're going to want to do is crouch to drop down here. And now there's an elevator shaft. So this elevator shaft is where you're supposed to come back up after you've gone across Ilos down a bit, fought through some enemies, and come back up to open up the gate for the Mako. So we're going to be dropping down there from the start. So this one is pretty annoying. Uh, so we're going to crouch again, but then we're going to want to run off to the right basically from the way we're facing now, so down the shaft and land um, somewhere that's hopefully in bounds and not that gets us stuck. So basically you want to just sprint really quickly and land. And yeah, see what I did did not even work. So I landed too far down and um, did not work. If you have auto saves on, um, it's going to put you back here. I probably should have just made sure to make a save, but whatever. Before actually doing this, but yeah. In general, you won't be able to make any saves here, which is actually the real big problem of doing this. Like, you won't be able to quick save because you'll be in combat because you didn't kill all the armatures. You only killed one of the two armatures. Um, uh, that's not what I want to do. It's okay, though. Again, throw, lift, crouch. Get underneath, clip up, place singularity. Walk with the crate as it's flying. Hope you don't fall off like I did. I think what happened there is that I got hit while I was on the crate and it um, in a weird direction. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, which is something you don't actually want to do in runs, is I'm just going to kill this guy so I can quick save and reload. If you do do this quick save and reload, um, you'll be able to... Uh, the crates will respawn where they originally were, because it doesn't save their position. Um, generally, you also need to kill this guy here to be able to save. So, just to keep that in mind. So yeah, as you can see, by me failing this, this is not an easy skip. Uh, and this is one that definitely gives me a lot of trouble as well. So if this is causing you too much trouble, just do it the normal way. Um, like the intended inbounds way. This 
skip is very difficult and does not save as much time as it may seem like it does. It saves maybe 20 or 30 seconds if you get it as fast as possible. Um, so, not a ton of time, but enough that it's worth doing. And it looks really cool, so that's, you know, priority number one. Okay. So let's try that again. So yeah, the timing on like when you, like where you can actually land and have it work is like kind of annoying to do as well. Um, if you land on top but too close to the edge, you, you'll just be kind of stuck and won't be able to move in and drop down. You can also land like into the first time, which is like in the elevator shaft but too far below the door to actually do anything with it. Um, neither of which are places you want to land. So again. Maybe I should just save up here to show this part off rather than have to keep redoing the lift part itself. Okay, so yeah, I landed exactly in bounds. Okay. Now you're gonna have to kill a bunch of guys here. Um, And you want to go right up where you came down from, or right below, right above where you came down, the security panel, and then go back up the elevator shaft you dropped through, essentially. But, you know, take the actual elevator to go up it. Um, if you have a grenade here, not a bad place to use it. Um, you're not gonna have, there's only like one other place you're really gonna have an opportunity to use any grenades to get in combat and have it be useful. Like I said, um, I'm not going to be in combat when I got up, get up to the top here, because I killed all the enemies to, you know, redo this. But, in an optimal situation where you don't kill the second armature, you can use it to get back in combat and be able to sprint up here. But, uh, you know, I won't be able to in this specific uh, tutorial run. So, even though I've been failing lots of skips, I think it's good to show, you know, it's good that that's happened because it shows you a lot of the things that have, can and will go wrong on doing these skips. Okay. Now we get into the Mako. Um, one thing to note is that the Mako can somehow have, have this weird thing that happens where it has really floaty physics here. It doesn't always happen. If that happens to you, Get out of the Mako, quick save, reload your save, and go back into the Mako, and you'll no longer have that weird physics issue happen. It makes it very difficult to drive when it has these really floaty physics compared to what it normally has. Like, yeah, it has floaty physics already, but like, when it has this glitch, when you go up like that, you probably go flying up in the air. Um, Anytime you like turn a bit, you can go flying in the air a bit. It's, it's really hard to control. So this is another place I should mention where this black texture thing happens to you if you're on your AMD processor like I am. Again, until you won't have any problem with it. Okay. So, back to carrying a little bit about experience, but not too much. Um, I already, I think, have enough at this point for it not to be a problem. Basically, we want to have 32,100. Um, basically by the final boss fight, and um, I'm already guaranteed that because you can get 1100 from talking to Vigil here, and then you get 800 for doing the first half of the boss fight. Um, but yeah. What is happening? It's a trap. Saren must have set an I already have way more than enough without Saren having to kill any enemies. So this is like not textured at all. It's really hard to see anything here. This one elevator for some reason. Um, if you have this, you know, Texture issue, texture lighting issue. I have studied the Protheans for decades, but I have never felt this sense of foreboding. What will we find down there? I don't know. I just hope whatever is down there is friendly. We've got enough enemies to deal with. 
so if you have any grenades left, this is the place to use it to run up to Vigil. Because uh, this is basically your like less good opportunity to use grenades to get into combat in places you wouldn't normally be able to get into combat. Yeah. So yeah, someone is mentioning this in chat. There is a way to fix this um, texture thing, but it messes with the shadows and the lighting of everything in the game. And uh, it makes it look really weird. So, I mean, it's up to you. Some some people may prefer that to having weird black textures. Um, but you'd also have to change it mid-run with console commands, so it can be annoying to deal with to do that. And I'm, you know, I'm personally used to it this way, so I don't really care. But if it bothers you, that's an option. So this turn is really hard to make on the Mako, um, so yeah, that's all I want to say about that turn. Be careful on that turn, it can be very easy to bump into a wall. Also when you fall down from that higher part down below, it also kind of messes with your driving a bit as well as you saw there. So we're pushing the end game here obviously. Um, so, not too much left to say about Eyeless. You've got a lot of driving to do. Um, if you were running low on experience, or like not, don't feel like you're gonna hit it with you know 800, 800 more plus um, some enemies you have to kill on the Citadel plus some other ones you can kill on the Citadel. If you're like something like below thirty thousand at this point. Or like just around thirty thousand, you should be really trying to kill lots of guys here. Um, but if you are, you know, even at like thirty-one or like thirty-eight, thirty thousand eight hundred or something at this point, you should probably be fine as long as you can keep killing a few more enemies here and there. So like I said, you get about like eight hundred to nine hundred. Uh, right before you go into the final boss fight. So you can level up right there, which is what I will do when we get to that part. Okay, so when you approach this part, when you're at the top of this ramp, you want to boost as far as you can. Because as soon as you go, start to head down, it'll stop you for this cutscene, but if you're in the air, you'll just carry your momentum forward until you hit the ground. So get a bit further down the ramp. Uh, before, you know stopping. So now we're just gonna drive basically straight forward and hit the conduit. You don't have to worry about these things at all. Also, the conduit looks really cool when you have this weird texture glitch going on. Um, so yeah, not really much to say about that, but it looks pretty cool. So our final visit to the Citadel is relatively quick. Um, so, uh, not much left to say. We got a few more trick, one more trick to show off, and then the final boss fight essentially. So, uh, yeah. This is helpful for any future people who are watching this. Feel free to, you know, 
jump into speedrun.com, um, figure contact me to figure out our Discord server, whatever. If you have questions. Right, so you gotta kill these three husks. Um, and right along this black line in the ground, you're just gonna wanna go right up to that. Crouch. Quick save. Reload. This will get you out of bounds. And we can turn this way. So over to where this black hole is, essentially. And then we want to head towards where this X is and end up just to the right of it, essentially. So once we get kind of next to it, like that. And yeah, you don't want to do what I just did. Uh, am I going to be able to get down from here? No. Okay, let's redo that. So yeah, I was a bit too far um, to the left. Left? Whatever. It's a bit too far to that direction. So you don't want to have, you don't want to be quite as close as I was to the X. You want to be a bit further to the right. So you land on top of this. Because you don't want to drop, and then you want to crouch to drop down. You don't want to land up on one of these higher raised platforms. You want to land up on the part. You want to land on the thing above, and then clip down, or crouch down to land on the part you're actually supposed to be walking on. Because you can't crouch down to get down from kind of the higher race platforms, but the things like way above that are like these, I don't know what you're supposed to be, buns or whatever, antennas, jump down from, you can crash to get down from them to where you're supposed to land. So this area here, I was just walking through, and this next few enemies here is a good place to get any last experience you might need. Shoot up there, you'll get in combat a bit faster. Be able to sprint for a bit longer, you know, in this area. But in general, I don't need to worry about experience anymore at this point, so I'm just gonna run, you know, walk past these guys. And then we wanna head for these stairs here. Oh, I actually took a lot of damage there. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we again have to worry about dialogue. Um, So we got multiple different intimidate options we're going to have to make, which are all going to be in the bottom right once they start to show up. Um, sorry, bottom bottom left, not bottom right. I was afraid. You've lost. You survived. The now so now when you get to this part, you want to hit like I as a slave, this. and then the just hit bottom option a bunch of times in a row. And good. To skip the first phase of the boss fight. Saren will kill himself, you won't have to fight him again on his, you know, silver surfer board like you did on his, um, Burmeyer the second time. Which is why we've, you know, been going through the process of having the intimidate points, having, getting renegade options, etc. Just to skip on that. Okay, so here, just dump anything you have left into lift, and then if you have anything left over, don't worry about it. Okay, here, what I like to do is switch to shotgun. This is up to you if you if you want to do this. This is just a safety strategy. Um, tends to be right when you get into the final fight. Before you can really do anything, Sovereign will just overload your, or overheat your gun by using sabotage, and that's not really something you want to have happen to your pistol, but if it happens to your shotgun, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so here we want to pick the option to save the council, because that's actually faster. Let's see, so this is our first paragon choice, like intentional paragon choice of the game.
Make sure he's dead. So our, our goal for this final fight is to have um, Sovereign knocked down but we're lifted pretty much as much as we can and then also have him under the effect of warp and then basically while he's knocked down or lifted and warped just unload up with him, oh, unload up him with marks. So generally what I like to do first is go uh, Throw, knock him down at the beginning. Um, I am sovereign, and this switch guns. Then, you know, warp plus marksman, then lift him once the knockdown is over. And just unload on him. Once he's down to half health, you should hit this cutscene. Once you get out of the cutscene, you can essentially do the same thing. And here, this is where you want to use. Um, Um, adrenaline burst to get them off cooldown if necessary. Generally, they are off cooldown from watching this long enough, this long cutscene. Um, but if you need to use them a second time, which is pretty reasonably likely, um, you may want to do that. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just be careful. There we go. Got him. So it's really important to um, keep him knocked down and stuff because once he starts jumping around, um, you know, he's really hard to hit. And e even if you have one of the abilities off cooldown, it's a good chance he'll just jump away before the power actually hits him. And when he's like up against the walls, you really just can't damage him in a go. Like when he's on the ceiling, you can try to knock him down, but when he's like standing on the walls and shooting at you, you can't damage him at all. So you don't really want to get him into that situation. So yeah, that is Mass Effect, 80%. Um, now it's tutorial Mass Effect, I um, hope this is helpful to any of you guys who end up watching this. Um, but yeah, like I said. Feel free to jump in and ask questions, whatever. Um, and yeah, make sure, once again, you have all the achievements unlocked. Um, you can either download a profile from speedrun.com to do that, or use console commands to just unlock them yourself, or just already have them unlocked, depending on it. The most important ones are the experience boosting ones, which I think are Go. reaching level 50 and 60, and then you know, some of the power related ones, any of the power related ones. That, you know, increase the duration of marksman or, um, you know, unlocking bonus powers and various stuff like that. But yeah, um, that is a summary. Oh yeah, and make sure you check the description of this video um, to see a pay spin to explain to you how to rebind. Um, rebind fast wheel to have tech skipping on it. Over yeah. Safe um, Where's the commander? Yeah, that's all I got to say. I guess. Um, thanks for watching. Y'all enjoy. Uh, 
this tutorial vid.